So why are the believers waiting to die to experience what we should be experiencing now?
you, Jesus. Can't make it without you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want to do this song that I love so much. It's a worship song. And when I'm at home and I'm with Jesus, I can just feel how he fills the room. Because God loves for us to exalt him. He inhabits the praises of his people. And you don't even have to carry a tune. But if he just knows that your heart is involved, that's all he needs. So you guys don't know the song, but you can just follow me. It's a beautiful song. It goes like this. It says, I will exalt you. I will exalt you. 
Y'all say that. Raise your hand and say, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. I'm no longer a slave to fear. doesn't have us because we are delivered through Christ. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. How many of you guys know that we are children of God, the most high God? Boy, if we could just understand how much he loves us, we would just give a crazy Remind shout in this place. He loves us so much that he went up on that cross and bled and died just for the sins of 
man. He's so mindful of us, and I want to thank him this morning and give him all of my praise. We rely on you fully, Jesus, for everything. You are our comfort. You are our shield. You are our strong power. Set us free, Jesus. You've been mighty good. 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 Move my shackles and you set me free. You've been mighty good. You've been mighty good. Lord, you loop my shackles and you set me free. You've been mighty good.
Hallelujah. 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 Loose my shackles and set me free. You've been mighty good. I like the way that sounds. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Loose my shackles and you set me free. Come on. You've been mighty good. Y'all not shouting, man. <laughs> do y'all do y'all hear what he's saying? He's saying you loose my shackles and you set me free. Come on now. He's mighty good. Say God is good. Come on, scream it out. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for a great time of fellowship today. And Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We thank you that today, Father, we're going to encounter you in a supernatural way. Father, take us deeper, higher, further in you. We are so prepared to eat from your table. Father, change our diets. Let our diets be what you prepare, not what man prepares. Not what our emotion and our feelings desire. Father, we yield, we yield and surrender to your Holy Spirit who is here. We pray blessings over this service and over everyone who is viewing online and everyone who is here. Have your way in this service. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you for your wisdom. I thank you for your peace, your love. I thank you for your revelation. And Father, we thank you for your faith. We believe in miracles, oh God, because we believe in you. And anything you want to do in this service, do it. Interrupt it. Disrupt anything that I have in mind if it's not on your agenda. So, Father, I surrender and I yield to the counsel of the one who teaches, which is the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, my good brother. Here we go. All right, let's, let's do communion, guys. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, my good brother. Communion is a very important thing. We do communion every time we get together on Sundays because we do communion to acknowledge what our Lord and Savior has done on the cross. And to me, communion is, is, is very important because it represents such a level of intimacy. Anytime you have someone's body into, into your body and someone's blood, into, into your body. You can't get more intimate than that. That is true intimacy. And what makes communion so amazing is because at that point, we allow the DNA of Jesus Christ to enter into our bodies. Now, whenever someone's DNA enters into your body, it changes the structure of who you are. You take on the personality of that individual. It's like having a heart transplant. It's like having a liver transplant. Well, we are having a total body transplant whenever we take communion and also our souls come into alignment with our spirit. So let's make a connection right now. This cracker that we have before us, this piece of bread, is actually the body of our Lord and Savior. So the body of our Lord and Savior is entering into our bodies right now. How amazing is that to have the body of our Lord and Savior enter into our bodies. So that means that anything in our body that does not represent his automatically comes into alignment with his as soon as we put this cracker to our mouth. Y'all made a connection? Let's go. Father, we speak to every joint and every ligament, every organ, every muscle, every tendon, every bone, every cell in our bodies. And we command right now in the name of Jesus to our bodies to come into full alignment with the body of Christ. Anything in our bodies that does not represent Jesus leaves now on contact. 
in the name of Jesus, this is an invasion straight from heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the blood is what paid the price for everything. So anything that we need to come into alignment, it comes into alignment because of the blood. And when that happens, turn me up a little bit, my, my sound, please. Am I good? Okay, cool. When, when, when the blood hits our body, what happens is there is a blood transfusion straight from Calvary. And what the blood does is it paid the price. And it's, it is actually undid what Adam did when we were in the Garden of Eden. So, Father, we thank you for this precious blood. As this blood enters into our bodies, Father God, we thank you that you're making everything right. And we thank you, Father God, for also reversing the aging process. We are aging backwards. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Y'all ready for this word? Hallelujah. All right. I'm, I'm a little excited today. I'm a little excited today because this morning I had, uh, I would say, a visitation from the Lord. And it was really unique. This morning as I laid in bed, what I saw was I saw, I saw this, this cave. And the cave that I saw was, it, it had big gray stones in it. It was huge stones. And I saw this pure, the purest water that you can ever see coming down, the, coming down the stone. And as the water was coming down the stone, I saw the stone become smaller and smaller. Lord, what is that? Son, I am going to deal with the hard places in my children's lives. And the water that you see is not regular water. It's my liquid love. My liquid love is going to invade my sons and daughters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with the hard places, the rough places in my children's lives. And that brought me so much joy. I was like, wow, that's amazing. Because I saw how big the stone was, and then it became so small as the water kept trickling down and trickling down. So uh, what I want to say to you guys is put, your position, put yourself in position to receive the liquid love of God. The liquid love of God is going to remove anything in your life that, rep that represents stone and anything in your life that would not have you have a heart of flesh. God's going to deal with those things, those things that are in the way that makes you sensitive to God and his presence and his being. Amen? All right. Today's topic is get your soul, emotion, mind, and will right. This is part two. I'm going to be speaking about this for a little bit because I'm getting so much more revelation. I want to tell you that your soul, your soul, which is your emotion, your mind, and your will, your soul, it's your greatest investment. Not your spirit. Your spirit does not need any more investing. Your soul, which is your emotion, your mind, and your will, is your greatest investment. Say, my soul, my soul. is my greatest, is my greatest. Investment. investment. The reason why your spirit does not need any more investing is this, because every human, whether they are saved or unsaved, whether they are praying and fasting every single day, or whether they are drug dealers and murderers, every human has the spirit of God. You don't have to get saved to have his spirit. I know we've been taught differently, but I'm here to, I'm here to disrupt that thinking, because that's wrong. Every human, whether you know God or not, if you are born, you are born with the spirit of God. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they did not lose the spirit of God. They still had his spirit. If Adam and Eve would have lost the spirit of God, they would have died on the spot. So you're not getting the spirit of God when you say yes to Jesus because you already have his spirit. That's what makes man real dangerous 
Because you can have God's spirit and still not acknowledge God. Right? There's a story in Genesis chapter 11. It's about the men. These men, these were wicked men. And these men decided to build a tower. And they said, come, let us come together and build a tower and go to heaven. And these men were able to build this tower so much so that it stopped God and got God's attention. He looked down and said, wait a minute, these men are building a tower. And God said this, there's nothing I can do to stop these men. Why is that? Because they had his spirit. But they did not have his mind. So every human has God's spirit. But every human does not have the mind of God. Your soul is your greatest investment because you can have God's spirit and not have God's mind and you can create just like God without having him in mind. You can create destruction at a dimension that is beyond comprehension. We know that. Look at atomic bombs. Look at these missiles and look at these tanks and look at these murderers and, and these people are doing this and they're doing it. How can you build a ship? A spaceship, a ship, something that can go to, from the earth straight to heaven. How can you build a spaceship? How can you build a bomb that can destroy the entire globe? It's easy. You have creative power just like God. You just don't have his mind. So if you have creative power like God and you don't have his mind, that makes you a very dangerous individual. That's why your greatest investment is not your spirit. Your spirit cannot get any better than, I got to drive this home. Your spirit cannot get any better than what it already is. Your spirit is perfect because you have the spirit of who? But you don't have what? You don't have the mind of God, but you have the spirit of God. So when you got saved, it wasn't about a renewed spirit. It was about a renewed what? Mind. It's never about the spirit. Your spirit is so perfect that your spirit is fighting for you every chance it gets. Go down the wrong direction. Do something wrong. What is that thing pulling you? What is that thing saying, don't go there? Don't do that. What is that? It's your spirit. What is the thing saying, do it anyway? It's your mind. And what is your body doing? Your body is following whatever your mind says to do. So there's a war on inside of us. And the war is God is fighting for our soul. And Satan is fighting for our soul. And our poor body is saying, what are y'all going to do? We get... There's a science, a science shows, there's a study that shows, a new study showed, and I looked this up, that every human has 6,200 thoughts a day. Now, we, get, we have more than that, but what this study shows is from the time a thought begins to the time a person plays it out. So... So, so there are some thoughts that start, but we don't play it out. We just say, nah. We jump to another thought. Ah. Oh, yeah, this one. Okay. In a day, there is 6,200 thought-out thoughts that we play out. Good Lord, have mercy. And out of 6,200 thoughts that we play out or we have in our mind, 80% of those thoughts are negative thoughts. That's 4,960 negative thoughts in one day. So that leaves us with 1,240 positive thoughts. So our negative thoughts are way outweighing our positive thoughts. So based on this study, Satan is winning. Because if we allow more negative thoughts to be in our lives versus positive thoughts, we're in a world of trouble. Because 80% of our mind is being reigned or ruled by Satan. Lord Jesus. 
So 20% of our mind is being ruled by God. That ain't good math. So the reason why we see people acting crazy and doing stuff is because the church has done a, a major injustice, not in purpose, but based on not really seeking information from Holy Spirit on what the truth is. All right. We've been taught that when you get saved or when you are born, you're born with a bad spirit. So our entire focus throughout our lives and even being saved is I need to get a better spirit. I need to get a better spirit. I need to get a better spirit. The problem is that that ain't true. Okay. So now we are focusing on the spirit, the spirit, the spirit. So what we do to get a better spirit is we read the word of God. We pray for five hours and we fast for 40 days and 40 nights to improve what's already perfect. Lord, help me with this. We're trying to improve what cannot be improved. The problem is that we are overeating in our spirit and we're not eating nothing for our soul. Say wisdom. All right. So now I'm eating. I'm eating. I'm feeding my spirit. And I'm feeding my spirit. And I'm feeding my spirit. The word of God. I get up in the morning. I have breakfast. I have lunch. I have dinner. I'm feeding my body. What in the world are you feeding your soul? If you're feeding your spirit all day long, you're feeding your body, that way you're sustained in the earth. What in the world are you feeding your soul? There's some people that are feeding their spirit, praying, fasting, praying, fasting. And after they finish praying and fasting, they turn on porn. Turn on a movie with all this blood being shed. Listening to music, calling women out of their names. Mm -hmm. Hanging out with people who are gossiping. Yeah. So now you feed your spirit the word of God. You feed your body the food. And now you're feeding your soul cuss words. Pornography. And movies that show blood. And what you're saying is that all three of me have a different diet. Oh, Lord, this is going to be good. Your diet for your spirit is the word of God. Your diet for your body is food. And your diet for your mind, your will, and your emotions is cuss words. But it's all good. Why? Because I spent five hours in prayer. So now my five hours in prayer outweighs two hours of cuss words. D do you see where we need to change our diet because whatever you feed your mind will supersede what happens in your body and your spirit is a slave to your mind how do i know that because 80 percent of your thoughts are negative thoughts so what we need to do is make sure that our body our spirit and our soul are on the same nutrition plan when your body and your soul and your spirit has the same plan, then everything, that's called a well-balanced diet. Okay, all right, listen. I'm going to pray. And because I pray, I'm not going to allow anything to disrupt that. So I'm not going to eat of the wrong stuff because if I eat of the wrong stuff, it's going to have me now going in a different direction because I don't have to work hard to to. to to sin, I can just do it because it's just a natural thing because my mind controls what I do. And if I just want to cuss somebody out, then I don't have to work hard not to cuss somebody out. I can cuss somebody out and not even care because it's, my mind is on automatic. But my spirit would say, shut your mouth. Don't say that. I'm trying to grow you up. Don't go there. If you cuss that person out, he has a gun and he may pull it out and kill you. See, your spirit is your perfect side that knows and sees everything. It's your soul that's messed up. And your soul needs to be worked on how often? Every day. 
Let's go to, you know what, no. Y'all pull out your phones and get on, get on, the, uh, get on my page because I'm going to show this video. This is the perfect time to show this video. I want to show the first one, uh, Jacob, please. Yep, let me pull it up so I can see, so I can know when it's over. Okay, I'm ready. Whenever y'all ready, just pull it up for me. You playing it now? Okay, I'm watching. Yeah. I want y'all to see this video. Have you been standing here all night? Watch this video. Hmm. Uh oh. Were you dividing by zero again? Dear Tim and Moby, what is computer programming? Thanks, Amy. He picked a good time to ask. Moby zapped his operations chip and he can't seem to do anything. Right, buddy? Don't worry, I've got you covered. We'll just switch you over to voice command. There. Now I can program you until your replacement chip arrives. I know, I know, your brain is no ordinary computer. But it does have some things in common with the ones people use. Computers can do all sorts of amazing things, from navigating the internet to piloting an airplane. But they can't do anything, at all, without a set of instructions. That's all a computer program is, a series of steps that a computer can follow. And somebody has to write those steps. Unlike you, computers can't really understand English. So programmers have to write their instructions in special languages. That's called coding, and the lines of instructions are known as code. There are literally hundreds of different languages. Thankfully, you don't need to know any of them to understand some programming basics. Just follow along as I code Moby. Okay, Moby, walk to the counter. All right, sorry about that. I have to remember that programs need to be really specific. They have to be step-by-step -step ordered instructions, an algorithm. That's why so many programming tools automatically number your lines of code. Let's try it. Moby, first lift your right foot, then move it ahead of your left foot, then put it down. Great. Let's call those three lines step right and save it as a function. That's like a mini program we can call on whenever we want. Now, let's make an identical step function for the left foot. Moby, step left, then step right. Now repeat lines one and two over and over. Repeating a section of code like this is called a loop, and it's something you can do in any programming language. Moby, stop, then walk back here, then stop. You've just been programmed. Lift your arms in triumph. Yeah, it is sort of like making a recipe. Instead of telling a computer what to do, you're telling it how to do it. Speaking of recipes, how about making a peanut butter sandwich for lunch? Moby, first put peanut butter on one slice of bread, then use the knife to spread it around. Okay, keep it together. Programmers have to be patient. You have to keep refining or iterating your code until it works the way you want it to. If there's a mistake or bug, you have to find out where it is and fix it. Moby, first open the peanut butter jar, then use the knife to scoop out some peanut butter, then spread it on a slice of bread, and finally put another slice on top. That's closer, but I think I'll just get lunch at school. Hey, that reminds me, I'm late. Quick, Moby. First, walk to a seat, then sit down in it. I can't take you anywhere. Here. 
Try this. First, check if the closest seat is occupied. If no, then sit. If yes, then move on to the next seat and repeat. Yup, and we got to another big part of coding, conditional statements. That's when the program looks at an unknown value or variable and does different things depending on what it is. In this case, the variable was whether the seat was empty. Moby looked at one desk, judging its condition as occupied or empty. Based on what he saw, he moved on to the next desk or sat down. In other words, he took inputs and used them to generate outputs. Right, the computers most of us use don't have fancy eye sensors like you do. Instead, they have input devices like keyboards, mice, and touchscreens. The inputs are the things you type and the places you click or tap. And the output is how the computer processes your input. You need a program to what now? Oh, um, Ms. Lynch, can I get a bathroom pass? You see that? This video very interesting is that that, that that robot did exactly what the programmer said to do. The programmer had the but I want you to see something. So when he said to, sp to make peanut butter and jelly specific, he didn't say, grab the jar, take all in it, and put it on the bread. He just said, make peanut butter and jelly, and that's what your mind does. If your mind would do whatever it thinks that you are saying, so this like everyone out there has the power to program your mind. What are you watching? What are you listening to? Who is in your ear? Because I'm telling you, that person is programming. Soul is. And how powerful your soul is. Your soul needs to be programmed every single day. Be programmed daily. Watch this. God now listen to what I'm saying. Where is God? Say God is on the inside of me. Okay, so now God lives on the inside of you. Am I right about that? Because your body is housing the spirit of God. I, I, I just want to sit there for one second. Your body is the housing place of Yahshua. Your body is the housing place of the God of the universe. God made himself containable to be in your body. Now, if you was to see God, and look at him, you can just eva I mean, just evaporate on the spot, and yet he lives on the inside of you. How do you contain that level of power and put it in a man? Watch this. Now, how do you have that much power inside of you and still can't control your mind? Jesus, help me. How can God, all-powerful God, who can just breathe and just destroy everything, have no power when it comes to your mind. Do you see how powerful this thing is? God gave you the ability to do something that he won't do. He won't change your mind for you. He gave you the empowerment to change your mind. And watch this. 
If you are not programming your mind, which is your emotions, your mind, and your will. Listen to what I'm saying. If you are not programming your mind the way that young man programmed the mind of that robot, you in the world of trouble. If you are not programming your mind, you are in the world of trouble. Your mind has to be programmed. And program how often? Daily. Daily. All right. Okay. So, 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 so let me ask you a question. How do you program your mind? With what? The word. Okay. All right. How often should you read the word? Daily. Okay. Say day and night. Okay. So the only way to program your mind is to feed your mind the very thing you're feeding your what? Come on. All right. All right. So you want to make sure that your spirit and your mind is on the same diet. Say wisdom. When your spirit and your mind is on the same diet, now your body is going to follow what your spirit and mind is saying. All right. But now when you have a spirit and a mind on two different nutritions, your body's saying, what am I doing here? Right? So we've been told that the spirit of a man and the soul of a man is somewhat interchangeable, intertwined. But your spirit and your soul cannot be the same because if your spirit and your mind or your soul is the same, then what is fighting you on the inside to do right when you're doing wrong? So it can't be that the mind or the soul and the spirit are the same because if the mind and spirit are the same and if they're waging war against each other, that's called a kingdom divided. And a kingdom divided won't do what? Won't stand. So what I'm saying is either Jesus or God is fighting God or Satan is fighting Satan. But you, that don't make sense because God won't fight God and Satan won't fight Satan. But God will fight Satan for your soul. God, oh, God going to fight the devil for your soul. Even when you're not fighting for your soul, God is doing all he can to preserve it. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, please. And I want to prove to you that this is, this is true. It's not the same. Our spirit and our soul isn't the same. Look what it says here. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole, come on, say spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. At the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. If our spirit, soul, and body was the same, why is he giving us a different spirit, boom, soul, boom, body? Why he say all of you? If they're the same. Why he saying, may your spirit, may your soul, and your body, because your spirit, your soul, and your body isn't the same. It is not the same. Your spirit and your soul is not the same. I got to drive this home. Your soul is something totally different than your spirit. The reason why your soul is your greatest investment is because your soul determines where you're going to live after you no longer live here. Lord Jesus Christ have mercy. (laughs) if your spirit determined where you lived, then you don't need to say yes to Jesus. Lord, Uh, let me teach this. If your spirit determines where you live when you leave the earth, then you don't have to say yes to Jesus because you already got his spirit. So if you're saying yes to Jesus, what you saying yes for? I don't need to say yes to you. I got your spirit. And when I leave this earth suit, I'm going to go straight to heaven. Why? Because I got your spirit. If it's just that easy. So what, what am I fighting for? Why am I, why am I fighting to, to, to go to heaven when I die? I got a spirit that's going to go there anyway. So if my spirit going to go to heaven... What am I fighting for? I'm going to show y'all this. This is going to bring it home. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. 
verse 19. Are you guys enjoying this? Look what it says. In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread till you return to the ground. Watch me on this. For out of it you were taken. For thus you are, and to thus you shall return. You got it? Okay. Let's go to the next scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. Then shall the dust out of which God made man's body return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return to God who gave it. Lord, help me with this. Hold up. Hold up. We just read that when you die, your body going where? Where's your body going to? To the dust. So your body's going to the earth. Hold up now. But look what it says here. Then shall the dust out of which God made man's body return to the earth as it was. So we understand that your body is going back where? To the earth. All right. So your body is going to the earth. But, and let me show you where your spirit going. And the spirit shall return to God who gave it. He's making a distinction that your body is going to the ground. And your spirit, which is his spirit, is going back where? Lord, good God almighty. So if your body is going to the ground and your spirit is going to him, where in the world is your soul going? Say wisdom. Don't sit on this. The reason why your spirit is going back to him is because it's his spirit and his spirit don't die. The spirit of God does not die. The body dies. The spirit does not die. And guess what? The soul don't die either. Whew. Your soul doesn't die. Your body is the housing place for your spirit and your soul. And he said, that's why I'm trying to tell you that every human has his spirit. Because it says here, when you die, the spirit shall return to God who gave it. So you got God's spirit inside of you right now. You don't need to pray for no level of anointing. You can't get no more anointed, no more blessed than how you are right now. You are blessed beyond measure. You just don't know it. How can you have God inside of you and you trying to get blessed where the ultimate blessing lives on the inside of you? Lord, have mercy. It's about changing this right here. Listen to what I'm saying. You got the Lord of hosts. You got Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sikhanu, Jehovah Imkadesh, Jehovah Rohi. Over Shama, yes. Yahweh, on the inside of you, and you're trying to get blessed. You can't get no more blessed and no more anointing than what you already are. All you have to do is change your mind. And as soon as you change your mind, all of those things will start to flow and roll into your life. Because you see, see, we we trying to pray and bring God down and God saying son I can't come down any more than I came down I'm inside of you baby God can't <laughs> Lord help me with this Holy Spirit God can't invade you anymore if, he, if God invaded you anymore you're gone because you would disintegrate you understand what I'm saying you are walking, and every step you take, Holy Spirit, come on. Come on. Lord, have mercy. Good God Almighty. Sabokose. Brabadebusise. Shokosi barendo. Ekoside. Ah, shokoside. Oh, glory to God. Because it's your spirit. That keeps you alive. Mm. And your body is manifesting what your spirit allows it to do. 
every time you step, it's not you, it's the spirit inside of you taking the step. Mm, 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 mm. So Jesus is inside of you stepping in the right direction. Oh God, man. Jesus is on the inside of you stepping where the blessing is and where the freedom is and where the peace is and where the deliverance is. And let me tell you something. If you're looking to get close to God, stop looking. You can't get any more closer to God than what you are right now. What you need to do, though, is start investing in your mind so your mind can follow your spirit. But the way we live, our spirit is fighting with our mind because we are allowing our mind to tell our spirit what to do. And it was never meant for your mind, your intellect, to tell your spirit what to do because your spirit has no limitations and no boundaries. Say, my spirit has no, lim no limitations and no boundaries. Here's the problem. When your spirit is saying go, your mind is saying you can't do that. So what you got to do is grab your mind and say shut up and follow the spirit. Oh, because your spirit is influenced by God, but your mind is influenced by Satan. I want to tell you this right now. Somebody watching, somebody here, your deliverance is right at your fingertip. All you have to do is grab your mind and tell your mind, mind, I'm going to reverse this thing. You're going to follow the spirit. When you tell your mind that no longer it's in charge, see, oh, goodness grief. Just like this man had the ability to program that computer, you got the ability to program your mind. You should not spend another day of your life trying to perfect your spirit because you're wasting time. What you got to do is, see, as a believer, you got to have an aim, just like Jesus did. I'm going to the cross. That's his aim. I'm going to the cross. That's his aim. I'm going to the cross. Your aim every day, 24-7, 365, your only assignment, listen to me, please hear me, your only assignment, your number one assignment should be moving forward. I'm going to perfect my mind. You don't need to be fasting for 40 days. And 40 nights. It's the wrong mindset. We don't need that. You don't need to be praying for five, six hours. Now, God, if God leads you to that, by all means do it. But what I'm saying is, you can fast for 40 days and 40 nights, and on day 41, cut somebody straight out. So you ain't never do nothing. You just wasted 40 days and 40 nights and you lost mad weight. You look skinny and you, you, you ain't strengthened. Spend 40 days in renewing your mind. Understanding that your mind and your spirit are not the same. They are not intertwined. And we've been taught that. But that's wrong. Because if your mind and your spirit is intertwined, that that must mean you got a weak spirit. And tell me this, what's weak about Jesus? Ain't nothing weak about the Lord. So your mind and your spirit cannot be intertwined because your mind is whooping on your spirit real good. That you are spirit focused. I'm going to get my spirit right. Get my spirit right. Well, you, you're wasting time. Let's go to 3 John 2. I'm almost done. Y'all enjoying this? Is, this? is this coming home? Yeah? Let's go to 3 John 2. I'm going to keep this going for a while because I think we got to really get this. You there? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers, even as thy soul prospers. So your prosperity 
is not contingent upon your spirit. Lord, have mercy, boy. <sighs> How can you have almighty God on the inside of you and your prosperity and your health will not change unless your soul is different? He says he wants you to prosper and be in health. Not as your spirit prospers, because your spirit is already prospering. Say, my spirit, my spirit is, already is already prospering. So if your spirit is prospering and your body is just a housing place for your spirit and your soul, if you're not prospering, then it's not your spirit that's keeping you from prospering. Oof, boy. So if you're not prospering, because he says he wants you to prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers, it ain't your spirit that you need to check. If you're not prospering, check what? Your soul. That means that your soul is not in alignment with what? With your spirit. Your soul is not in alignment with your spirit. Your soul is not in alignment with your spirit. When I was a drug dealer, and I didn't know God, I had a one-track mind. I was going to succeed by any means possible. And for lack of a better word, I did succeed, according to the world. Sold lots of drugs and made lots of money. And what, was, what made me succeed? Simple. I had such a one-track mind. All I saw was success. And it manifested. So how can a person who don't know God experience some level of success or, or get what they see, and then those who know God over here say, when are you going to bless me? <laughs> I'm sowing, God, when are you going to bless me? How does that work? How is it that an outsider who don't know God will live better than someone who does? Is that that person is sold out in their mind. I'm going to succeed. Now that's a house divided still because even though that person is doing wrong, their spirit is still crying out for them to do right. But they still succeed. Now what would happen when a believer allows his spirit and his mind to be in alignment, how much more will you succeed then? It's not that difficult. Your mind just needs programming every day. And your mind needs to line up with the word of God. And listen to this, right? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Never go past a conviction. Oh, boy. Your conviction has to outweigh your desire. Say, my conviction has to outweigh my desire. Okay, when you're ready to do something, right, and you feel that stop, never go past the stop. That's your spirit warning you that there's danger the next step you take. But your soul would say, take the risk. Your spirit is saying, don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. I want to recommend that for the next seven days, you starve the heck out of your soul. Don't watch something that your spirit can't benefit from. Don't listen to something that will grieve your spirit. When you are ready to go slam off and your spirit is saying no, take your hand physically and put it over your mouth. Get up every single day and around the clock make this one confession. I have the mind of Christ. Put your hand on your head and confess around the clock. 
I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind. It's not that hard. I have the mind of Christ. Say it out loud. Why? Because your spirit, your, your, your soul is no different than the computer that we saw. And you have the ability to program it whenever you want. Here is the wisdom. If you are not programming your mind, somebody else is. That's why you got to be careful who you listen to. You got to be careful who you give your hearing to. You got to be careful what you're listening to, what you read, and what you subscribe to. You got to be careful to compromise. Compromise is the enemy to God because he never does it. It's either this or that. It's never, ah, oh, it's that, but it ain't too bad. Never that way with God. So you know that's Satan that will satisfy your soul. For the next seven days, I am, I am, I am, I, I implore you. It is my passion, my mission to get everyone who will listen to what I have to say to change their mind. You will become so powerful as you change your soul. The reason why your soul is most important is this. Your soul determines who you're going to spend the rest of eternity with. Your soul never dies. When you die, when we die, we're going to go to heaven and we're going to hear, we're going to remember everything we did here on the earth. We're going to remember and play back everything we did here on the earth. The only difference between heaven and hell is this. The love of God will consume us so much that every torment, every shame, every guilt that we experience here, that we take up there, his love is going to wipe it clean. But if a person goes to hell, they will forever be tormented by their soul. It's the only difference. You won't get tormented in heaven because God's love is going to supersede all of that stuff. But if a person goes to hell, their minds will be forever tormented. Your mind would never die. Do, do, you, do, you, do you see how powerful this is? Your soul will never die. Your soul is going with you to eternity somewhere. And you are making decisions today on whether you're going to live in torment or in peace and love. That's it. Nobody else can control your mind but you. If God could control your mind, it'll be changed just like that. Why? Because God lives where? Inside of you. And he still can't change your mind. Father, I gave your wisdom. I gave your revelation. And Father, we just thank you that you are helping us to transform this thing called the soul. We understand that you live on the inside of us, and that's the, that's the strong part. But we also understand that there's a part that needs to be remolded and reshaped daily. So, Father, right now, by confession, we put our hands on our heads and say, Jesus, I have your mind. I have the mind of Christ. Jesus, overtake my mind right now. I rebuke any thoughts that is not of you. Jesus, I desire to think like you, to be like you all the time. Jesus, have your Holy Spirit overtake my mind. Holy Spirit, I want to think like Jesus. Help me to think more like Jesus. Point me in the right direction. Show me things. Bring me people that would help me to reshape my mind. Anything of anything that is not of you, anyone that is not of you, remove it now. Holy Spirit, I give you the authority to reprogram my mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 All right, praise God. All right, guys. Did y'all enjoy that?
Was that good? I'm going to keep this going. Because this is serious. You know why? It's easy to go back to what's common. And that was a good message, but, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just hang out a little bit and, you know, do some stuff that I shouldn't do. Because it ain't that bad. I've been doing it all this time, and I'm, it ain't hurt. So I, I'm only human. For real. <laughs> you better wake up. You ain't no human. You a spirit. You ain't human. All right, so it's time to sow into the ministry. For those who are going to give, all right. Yeah, for those who are going to give uh, virtually, text the word give to 804-348-8300. Text the word give to 804-348-8300. Hallelujah. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. And if you say that a thousand times in one day, then that's okay. Which, what are you doing? I'm, I'm reprogramming some stuff. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. And sometimes you got to squeeze that thing because it's telling you something else. And you don't stop saying it until it comes into alignment. Shut up. I have the mind of Christ. This is serious. All right, let's pray over the offering. Father, we thank you for those who are sowing into this ground called Fit for the Kingdom Global Ministry. In Jesus' name, Father, thank you, Father God, that you give seed to the sower. We bless those, Father God, who are blessing this ministry. We thank them for partnering with us to bring changes in the lives of so many people. Father, we give you honor, praise, and glory. Father, we are praying that you will bless these mighty seeds, mighty, these mighty offerings, and bring it back to these individuals. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall now men give back to our bosom. In Jesus' name, amen. And there's nothing wrong with looking in the mirror and telling you what you're not going to do. You ain't going to do that. It's okay. I've done it. And truthfully speaking, I still do it today. That ain't changing. Why? Because my mind needs to be in alignment, man. Ugh. Praise God. All right. Come on, wife. Let's take us out of here. If anybody out there does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, uh, yeah, uh, uh, uh. We, we need a microphone for the lovely Lady K. You got one? Hey. Don't get started. Just hold up. We'll get to that in a minute. Because we know we'll go. Okay. Salvation. Salvation. All right. So if anyone out there does not know Jesus, the one who just wants to massage your mind, the one who wants to help you to escape your mind, if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, repeat after me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. You are God in the flesh. You are God in the flesh. You are the Son of God. You are Son. You died and rose, died and rose on, the third day. on the third day. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus for, setting me free. for setting me free. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus for, bringing me for bringing me into strong relationship, into strong relationship with, Father God with Father God and Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit. Thank, you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I have nothing in common, I have nothing in common with, the enemy. with the enemy. I have all things in common, have all things in common with, you. with you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Woohoo! You recited that prayer. We are so excited for you. Now you can begin to renew your mind daily. Your spirit is perfect, but it is the soul that we are renewing constantly. We have to meditate on the word day and what? Day and night. Renew that thing. We want to thank you guys for sharing the Sunday with us. And we are excited about what God is doing here with us and also with you in your life. Let's continue to grow in God and in wisdom. Yes. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it, right? That's it. (laughs) Pray us up out of here. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Father, we pray uh, over this week. Thank you. We're going to have a blessed week because of you. And Father God, we're going to dedicate the next seven days. To a renewing of the mind. Yes, Lord. We're going to change our diets yes. 
and eat of your word and have our soul follow our spirit. And Father, we thank you for opportunities to grow us up in our soul. In Jesus' name, we pray blessings over our families, our friends, our loved ones, and all that concerns us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great week. Check us out of here. Boom, boom. Hold up.